Interesting fact, I just recorded like 20 minutes for this video and I didn't hit record. I guess it's practice. I don't know. I didn't really need practice, but that's what I did. This mic is really close. It's creeping me out. <laughs> hey everyone, Mike here. In this video, we're going to continue down the path of Federation and I'm going to try to take some of those concepts we talked about in the previous videos and make them a little more real for you guys. So we're going to get into the GUI. I already have a Federation deployment, so I'm going to show you what it looks like and we'll go over some of the kind of key concepts in Federation along the way. So let's get to it. So in our design, we have it set up so that we have two data centers. We have a San Francisco data center here and we have a Los Angeles data center over here. Now within each data center, we have vCenters for each data center. We have some vSphere hosts in each data center. And of course here we have our LM or local manager. And then somewhere in this deployment, we really don't care for the, for the sake of this video, we have a global manager or a cluster of global managers deployed. But again, that is not, that's not in scope for now. All you really need to know is we have a global manager deployed and it's deployed just like a regular NSXT manager. We just flip the role. Instead of saying NSXT manager, we make it a global manager. That's all. So what I really wanna talk about is we have these LMs here. And these LMs, whenever you see LMs from now on, just think of local manager, AKA NSXT manager. It's either a single manager or a cluster of three, just like normal NSXT. And this LM is responsible for doing all of the same things it did before with plain old non-federation NSXT although now it just listens to a global manager as well. So essentially it's kind of saying, I can, all, I can make my own configurations, I can change things, I can create T0s and T1s and NAT and security policy, I can do all of those things I could do before. But now I kinda, I'm also keeping an ear open for the global manager to tell me, hey, you need to create this stretch network or you need to create this global object that's going to span multiple sites. That's really all this is. So keep that in mind. Let's flip over to the lab and take a look at my global manager for this exact deployment. All right, so here we are inside of the global manager. We can tell that we're in the global manager because we see right here, it says the role is global manager. The name I gave it is main GM. That's just a name. I also have two sites. In this case, I have Los Angeles and San Francisco. We saw that on that slide a minute ago and we see on-prem. That just means these are physical locations. Now, one thing to know about NSXT Federation is like I said, we can still manage each of those sites independently. I can actually do that by just clicking on one of those. And now I'm in the LM and I can manage that site. So I'm managing Los Angeles only right now. So for example, if I went to inventory, let's go to groups and let's just create a new group. I'll just say um, nerdy tech group, something like that. I'll hit save. Okay, so I just created this group, Nerdy Tech Group. While I'm here, I also want you to see we have a couple of groups here, web-dev, web-prod. We see we have this tag that says GM. This means these are created by the global manager and I can't edit those because they're global objects. So if I go here and I go to edit, look at that, it's grayed out. But if I go to my new group I just created, look at that, I can edit it. So that's a key concept of federation. Now in our case, I just created this local group on the Los Angeles LM. So let's go ahead and go to San Francisco and we'll head over to inventory and to groups. So the same place we were just at, look at that. We see completely different groups in this LM. So we still have that independence. That's what I'm trying to show you here. But of course we do also have these groups that were created by our GM as well. So now if I switch to the global manager, we should see, I'll give it a second here. We'll head over to inventory again and one more time to groups. We see here that those don't show GM, those just show regular objects because we're in the GM now. And basically we have this concept of region in Federation. All region is, is basically saying, how far should this object span? And this only applies, in this case, regions are only a security construct in Federation. This is not talking about T0s, T1s, segments. This has nothing to do with any of that. A region is only defining a subset of sites that we should then apply policy to or security groups and say that, you know, for example, web-dev only extends to the sites in Cali-sites, which is a region I created, which by the way, has both of those sites in it. Okay, that said, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So let's go over to system and we'll head down to location manager right here on the left. Now we see right here, first of all, we see our, our GM status. 
obviously in my case, I have only one GM and it's active. If I had a standby cluster, I would see that here where I could deploy that here as well. Now what we care about is our sites. So if we go down here, we see locations. These are representing our LMs in each of our sites. So basically we see that I have the FQDN for the VIP of the Los Angeles LM. And then I also have the FQDN or IP for the VIP pointing to the San Francisco LM. Now I wanna point out one very critical thing here. Even if you only have one LM in your physical location, you have to create an LM VIP. So you'd have to go into the manager and create a VIP that represents that cluster, even though you only have one node in that cluster. If you don't do that, you can't register a single manager uh, to your global manager. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I also wanna talk about the difference between registration and what's called onboarding. So the concept of registration in Federation is something new to NSX. Basically, this is really simple. It just means I'm an LM, I want to be managed by this GM over here, so I'm gonna register myself to that GM, essentially. That's registration. So if we see here, we can see I have two sites. I have Los Angeles, San Francisco. Both of them have been registered to this GM. Now, the concept of onboarding is different. Onboarding means we're going to take existing objects in that LM, such as groups or security policy, for example, and we're going to import those into the GM and convert them to a global object. That's a key point here. So once you onboard an object, it becomes a global object and there's no going back. The implication there is that it can only be managed going forward from your global manager. Why would you do that? Well, maybe you're lazy, maybe you have a bunch of groups and you don't wanna recreate them, something like that. Maybe a brownfield environment, obviously. So. That's, that's really what onboarding is for. And, and you see here, it says, we found objects and policies in this location. Do you want to import them? That's onboarding. It's asking me, do you want to onboard this LM? If I say no thanks, I still can do that later. So if I go to actions right here for that site, I can go down to import to GM. So I can do that, but here's the thing. I can only do it one time. So in this case, I have Los Angeles. I already onboarded Los Angeles. So I imported some objects from Los Angeles into this global manager. It says imported to GM. But look here, if I go to actions, can't import to GM anymore. So I wanted to point that out. Now from a general functionality standpoint, I'll just give you a very, very brief tour. If we go to security, we see that it looks familiar, but it's different than what we've seen in our LMs. Specifically on the left here, we don't have a lot of features listed here. We don't see things like URL analysis, or threat prevention or IDS, IPS, or anything like that. So this is the functionality that's supported for federation. So for federation spanning multiple sites, I can do basic distributed firewalling. All of the distributed firewalling we could do before, pretty much we can still do now, but obviously we see IDS, IPS is not supported here currently. If we head over to networking, it looks pretty much the same again. We have the ability to create tier zero gateways, T1s, we can set up NAT, we can do all of the things that we could do before. The only difference is now we're just taking into consideration which sites will this extend to. And that said, we're not gonna go over that in this video. That's a little more advanced. I wanted to just give you guys kind of an overview and just get you familiar with the concepts and kind of navigating through the GM and, and seeing some of these concepts. So in the next few videos, we'll dive into this a little bit more in depth. So I hope this was helpful. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care.